All right, in this video tutorial, we're going to be working with some CSS conical gradients. And there's some really fun gradients, lesser known of the CSS gradients. We're gonna be creating some effects that kind of look like these that you see here in the little preview. So follow along and let's jump right in. Okay, the first thing to note here is that CSS conical gradients are not supported in all of the browsers. Firefox being the one of the laggers right now that still doesn't support conical gradients, but it has pretty good support in Chrome and Safari. And so let's go ahead and take a look at just some of the basics here of this conical gradient. Now the traditional gradient, which is the radial gradient and the linear gradient that you see here in the slides, they sort of either work in a line or they work from the inner uh, most part of the area, we'll say a circle here, and they work towards the out. Uh, but the conical gradient, as you're seeing on the far left, is a little bit different because it works around the edge of the object in sort of a circular fashion to create a cone. That's the where the conical gradient sort of comes from, is because when you have a conical gradient, it sort of looks like a cone. So you can see here with the color stops is really where this kind of comes into play. So you can see here that the conical gradient here is set up with three color stops, each at roughly 33% and it wraps around the area. Whereas the radial gradient starts at the center of the element and then it sort of works its way towards the outer edges. And the linear gradient just starts at the top or bottom edge and it works its way all the way to the other side. So that's kind of the difference between the three main types of gradients and how the conical really plays into this. Now in this next slide, you can just see some of the basic syntax. You're gonna be adding conical gradients on the background, just like you would a background image of a CSS element uh, so that there's uh, any of the properties that sort of behave on background images apply also to conical gradients. So you can see you simply just declare the colors you want. You can use any of the formats, hex, HSLA, RGB, RGBA for your color stops. And if you just declare them in a list like this, it will just equally divide the area, the 360 degrees up into equal quadrants for each of your colors. Now, the conical gradient, because it's a uh, sort of an angle type of gradient, we use different CSS units when we're declaring this. So you can see here at the top of the list, we have degrees. So if you're going to declare degrees, DEG, it's a number between 0 and 360. If you're going to be using gradients, it's a number between 0 and 400. If you're going to be using radians, it's going to be 2 pi. And turns is uh, one. One turn is one whole circle. So you're going to be using fractions like 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 would be half of a turn, etc. And then lastly, you can use percentages. Percentages is not, not actually part of the original specifications, but all browsers implement them. So you can say something like 25%, 30%, and you uh, it will work as you expect. So that's the basics of the syntax and gradients. Let's go ahead and jump into some code so you can really see how this looks. Okay, so here we are in our code editor, Visual Studio. And I'm just going to kind of look at the HTML first because most of the work is going to be done in CSS. So really all I've got in this HTML document is just a bunch of div tags. So just one, two, three. I've got these ones commented out down here in a second. We'll turn those back on, but it's essentially just another div with an image, a blank div, and then a div with a little input and a button label. So nothing too fancy here, just some basic placeholder elements. Now also note that in my head section, I've kind of minified this, but I am linking out, I've got a little jQuery script going here, but I am also going to be linking out to this polyfill. It's uh, it's called the Conic Gradient Polyfill. So if your browser doesn't support Conic Gradients, you can add this little polyfill right here, and that will essentially enable your browser to use this Conic Gradient in CSS. So I'm going to be using Google Chrome, which already supports this, so I don't need to turn these on, but that's something that you will need to do if you are uh, working with a browser that doesn't like Firefox. Okay, so let's minimize this head and we're gonna jump over here and start off with just a basic conic gradient here in div number one. So here you can see I've just got a little bit of uh, boilerplate code, if you will, on my div tags. I'm just making them all 250, 250 by 250. So they're all sort of in a box shape here. So with this first one, number one, you can see that the background is just set to conic gradient, red to blue. Now conic gradients always start at north or zero degrees, which is the very top here. So you can see that this gradient starts right here and it wraps clockwise around like this 
over to the back side. So it's just a simple gradient between red and blue. You can see they meet back up at zero degrees or due north. Let's go ahead and take a look at this second one here. So I'm gonna comment this back on and save here. And here's the second one. So you can see with this second conic gradient, I'm using sort of hard color stops, if you will. So with this one, it's going red to 48 degrees, green from, this should actually be 48, 48 to 195, and then blue, we'll say 195, whoops, 195, all the way to the end. And then I'm setting the border radius to 50%, which is then making this a complete circle. So you can sort of generate what's known as pie charts, kind of a pie chart with just the conical gradient. And you do that using these hard stops. So 48 to 195, 195 to 360, and that will create sort of these hard lines. So that's another example. Let's jump over here to the third example. So in this sample right here, you'll see that what's cool about conic gradients is you can do a background gradient that is offset. So in this example here, what I'm doing here is I'm saying from zero degrees at, if you use the keyword at, you're essentially setting the origin point for this conic gradient. By default, it's in the very center, as you can see in these top two examples. But in this sample, you can see I've, you can even use negative values. So I've set it to negative five. Uh, let's actually put this positive so you can see here. So that's at 25% over and 25% down. But I can set this to negative 5% or something. And then it's actually off screen a little bit. So you can create these cool gradients. It's almost like I'm looking at the bottom right quadrant of the gradient as it swoops around in a circle. So you can't do this with linear gradients in any fashion. But with conic gradients, you can create some really cool, interesting, I suppose, background effects uh, by just offsetting that value there of your uh, origin point. Okay, so down here, let's look at number four. Now for this one, I'm going to jump over here to my uh, code over here and turn number four on. So I'll just kind of move this comment down a little bit. So on number four, I've got this just little uh, image right here. And this image, the reason why I loaded jQuery earlier is I just dropped in the draggable plugin so I can actually drag this image around, you can see, with jQuery draggable. So let's jump over to the CSS and we'll uncomment number four. And what number four is actually pretty interesting you can do with the conical gradient. So this entire background pattern, which looks like a checkerboard, is created with the conical gradient. And so you can almost, the way I've set this up is if it was like a fake transparency like you would see in your design program Photoshop or something where the, that denotes the transparent pixels. So you could almost have, you know, like build your own little editor here with transparent with just a single conical gradient. And I'm going to show you how this guy works. So what's really happening here, I'm going to turn off repeat and this will actually really see, you'll be able to see what's happening here. So whoops, I'm going to set that to no repeat and save. So right here is actually the gradient that's being created. So really what I'm doing, it's still just a conical gradient, but I'm just rotating every 90 degrees. So it's rotating 90 degrees, color stop, 90 degrees, color stop, 90 degrees, color stop, 90 degrees, color stop. And you can see in this one, it's actually using the turn. So 0.25 turns to 0.5. So a quarter to 50%, 50% to 75%, 75, then wraps all the way around to one. So that's using the turn uh, angle. And what's pretty cool about here is then we can set the background because it behaves as if it was a background image. We can set that to repeating. So I could set this guy to repeat X, repeat Y. So I'll just do this on repeat Y and save. Now you can see it repeats down the Y axis or I can just say repeat and then it repeats all over. And of course, because it's a background image, I can control the size. So these two values right here are the size. So I can set this to, I could set it to 25 whoops, 25% and 25% to make those much, much bigger. So really, really cool what you can do with a conical gradient. Kind of clever, I suppose, but you can sort of create like these grid-like patterns, uh, checkerboard patterns more or less with those conic gradients. Okay, let's move down here to number five. So on number five, this one will truly look like the actual cone. So we'll move that down and we'll uncomment number five here. And number five I have set up as an actual cone. So you can see this is kind of where they get their name. 
So I've just got this set up with a little hover state. So when I hover over, it basically just inverts this and kind of rotates it as well. Actually, it doesn't invert, it just does a little rotation here. But you can see with this gradient, essentially what I'm doing is it's basically the exact same as this one, except I'm rotating back to red from blue to red at this midpoint. So you don't get that harsh line. And then you can have a really smooth looking gradient. Also to note from this one, I'm offsetting from a negative degree as well. That's why my uh, my starting point isn't right due north. It's actually offset a little bit at negative 28 degrees. So if I change this back to zero degrees and save, we can see that that's gonna up, whoops, that's my hover state, sorry. Let's move back over here to the regular state. And you can see now it's due north. So you can actually offset in negative or positive directions, which is pretty cool. Okay, now in this last example, this is kind of the most advanced and you can really see how far you can take this to build some interesting effects with conical gradients. So I'm gonna go back here to the index and let's uncomment here our fifth one. And just to show you how this is set up, it's just a div that we're using as a wrapper so I can add a background color. And then it's just a regular old input and label. So it's just a checkbox, a regular old checkbox, okay? And let's go ahead and turn on the styles here. There's quite a few styles. There's a lot going on here. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and turn this guy on and then scroll down. And you can see this last example down here is the uh, final one. I'm going to zoom in a click or two so you can really see this guy. So what we have here is we have a conical gradient that is creating the effect of like a button, a metallic button. And what we've done here is actually this is a checkbox. So if I click this, I can sort of turn it on and add another glow behind there. And this is essentially all done with just one element. So really, really cool how far you can take these and use these. Now to see the conical gradient effect here, this is a, uh, oops, let me zoom back out here so you can kind of see how this is looking. So with this particular example, here is the conical gradient. So I'm gonna turn off the repeating radial gradient just for a second. So we'll comment out that line. And that actually broke this line. Let me uh, fix that. So this needs to be a semicolon really quick like. And you can now see just what that conical gradient looks like. So it's actually creating this sort of, you know, in and out and in and out and in and out over the top of that button. All these other shadows and things like that are mostly created with the before and after pseudo elements. I'm not gonna go over all the code for this. There's quite a bit going on here, uh, but there's linear gradients creating some of those outer and inner shadows and all sorts of things. And then to create this little glow on the checked state, that's just with a simple box shadow. So there's linear gradients, box shadows, and then finally the conical gradient is the one that's creating that uh, little effect right there. So I'm gonna undo that, turn that back on, and then you get sort of that full cool metallic looking button with a conical gradient. Now you've noticed here that this is using a command called repeating dash. So the last sample I'm going to show you is how you can create sort of a sunburst pattern by using a repeating conical gradient. So you can actually do repeating radial gradients and linear and everything else. So way up here at the very top, I've got my body tag set to use, let's uncomment this, a repeating conical gradient. So it's a really simple gradient that just you can, here's using HSLA, but it's just going from one color to the next color. So there's essentially just two colors here in 15 degree increments. So between zero and 15 and 15 and 30. So now let's save that. And now I'm gonna kind of resize this so you can see really what this is looking like here. And that's the effect now that we have. So it creates this sunburst as the, the effect I like to call uh, for this pattern. But it's really just a gradient that it's a conical gradient that's two slices like this then that's then repeated all the way around using the repeating syntax for gradients so that's just a few of the simple samples uh, that are really cool you can create with these conical gradients hopefully you learned a trick or two and we will see you in the next one